Welcome. In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this Mac Mini with the M1 processor. It's the new Apple Silicon. And I special ordered this one with 1 terabyte of SSD and 16 gigabytes of RAM. If you find this video helpful and you want to buy a base model, I'll put a link in the description to this on Amazon. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. That model will have 8 gig of RAM and I think it's a 512 megabyte hard drive. So I currently have a 2012 Mac Mini, and it's considered one of the better Mac Minis. It's very expandable. You can put two hard drives in it. You can upgrade the RAM. It has FireWire on it. So it's a pretty capable machine, and we still use it. So on first impression, this looks very similar to the 2020 Mac Mini. I have a sticker in there. That looks larger than previous stickers. I probably have a ton of those sitting around. And here's the cord. This is black. The other one had a white cord, if I remember correctly. This takes a standard plug, so you could get a shorter cable or a longer one if you needed it. Of course, this doesn't have an optical drive, so you're not going to have any recovery media in it. And I'll be making a number of videos with this computer. So I'll put a link in the description to my Mac playlist, and you can find those videos there. I do videos on Mac ports, FFmpeg, a lot of command line stuff. And if there's anything you want me to test with this, drop a comment below and I can maybe check it out. We have one more piece of packing material here. It covers the ports. So on the front we have a little dot here for an indicator. We have the Apple logo on top. On the back we have the power, gigabit ethernet. These are Thunderbolt 4 or USB 4 or something ports. A HDMI. And we have two USB three ports or 3.1. I'm not sure what standard those are at. Then we have the headphone port. Now the previous Mac Mini had optical. I don't think these have optical on them. So on my 2012 Mac Mini you can plug an optical cable in there and hook it up to a stereo receiver and it can send through you know 5.1 surround or whatever. Supposedly this bottom will pop off here and you can get to the inside although there's not much you can do on the inside. It's There's no user upgradable parts in here. So I'm going to hook this up to my monitor, keyboard, and mouse and we'll take a look at the setup. Okay, it's asking me to choose my language, and it also told me to choose a language using the speaker on the Mac Mini. So that's for accessibility reasons. So I'll just hit enter here since I'm speaking English. It says select your country or region. I'll choose USA. Let's see if I can type U here. I can, so that'll take me down to the U's. I'll hit continue. So this says written and spoken languages. So it has my preferred language input source and dictation. On the left here it says customize so I could change things there if I needed. So I'll hit continue. Now it has an accessibility menu. And I think this might be new with Big Sur. I can't remember what the previous versions had but this is a good idea putting this at the very beginning. So if you have accessibility needs you can get those taken care of right away. I'll just say not now. It wants me to select a Wi-Fi network. I'm going to plug this into Ethernet for now. I'll be doing a future video where I test the Wi-Fi performance of this. So I'll click on other network options. I'll choose local network. I'll hit continue. I'll leave these as the default. It's going to use DHCP. I'll hit continue. It's talking about data and privacy. I'll hit continue. Now here's the migration assistant, and typically when I set up a new Mac I will use this. So you can migrate data from a Mac, Time Machine, or a startup disk, or from a Windows PC. And you don't have to do this now. After you have it all set up, you can go into your utility folder and find the migration assistant and then run it. It's probably best to run it towards the beginning of setting up your computer, but that will take a long time and I don't want to film that whole process. So I'll hit not now. It's asking for my Apple ID, so I'll enter my Apple ID here. I'll hit continue. I'll enter my password. Now it's doing two-factor authentication. I'll enter that in. It has the iCloud's terms and conditions. I'll agree to those. I read those offline, probably, maybe. Okay, so here it's asking to create a computer account, and I like my account name just to be Rick. That's what I usually do. Then I'll enter in my password. And then you have this option where it says allow my Apple ID to reset this password. But I usually do not have that on. That's a personal choice if you want to be able to do that. I'll hit continue. Now it's asking to set up Find My. And this allows you to find your Mac if it gets lost or stolen. And I use this on my phones, iPads, everything. So you can go to the Find My app and it will show you where all your devices are. So I do want to use that. I'll hit continue. 
So now it says Express Setup. So I'm going to go to Customize Settings. I want to enable location services on this Mac. I'll hit Continue. I don't want to share analytics. That's a personal choice. I can hit Continue here. Then it has Screen Time. I do have this on, but I don't really pay a lot of attention to it. So I'll just hit Continue. I don't want to use Siri on this. I have enough other devices that I can use Siri on or other assistants. It says choose your look, light, dark, or auto. I'll choose auto for now. Needless to say, I can change all this later if I don't like it. I can't remember what I even use on my other computer. I think I have it to light. Okay, it says the calendar would like to use your current location. I'll hit OK. So if you've been using Mac for a long time or if you haven't used it for a while, you may notice that the newer systems ask you if certain applications can use the desktop, if they can use network, things like that. And that is a security feature. It's kind of annoying at times, but it's so a virus can't come on here and start using your network without your permission. So now we have the keyboard assistant and I'm not using an Apple keyboard. I'm using a PC keyboard, so it wants to configure it. So I'll hit continue here. I'll hit the button to the right of my left shift key and then I'll hit the button to the left of my right shift key. I want the default here, I'll hit done. And now we're in the desktop. I don't know if any other setup's gonna pop up here or not. So a couple personal preferences I set up on mine. I'll go to the finder and go to preferences and I'll choose to show the hard disks on the hard drive and also the connected servers. Next I'll open up the hard drive. I'll take the applications folder and I'll drag it down to the dock over here. I'll right click on it and I'll say show as list. I'll right click on it again and I'll say display as folder. So now I can click on here and it will show me all my applications. So this is kind of like the start menu in Windows. So if I want to open up QuickTime I can go here and open QuickTime. So I'll open up a web browser here. So this imported things from the iCloud. That's why I blurred my screen. It has my links and things on there. But I can go to a website up here. We'll test the Ethernet on here and see if it's fast. This is connecting to a Synology NAS on my network running the speed test software. So we're getting good Ethernet speed. I didn't expect it would be slow. So I'm looking at my capture software and it looks like it took around 10 minutes to set this up completely. Another thing you'll want to do is come down here to System Preferences and go to Software Update and check for software updates. I know one just came out today, I think, or yesterday. So there's probably going to be one available. Yeah, it's Big Sur 11.1. So I'll be updating this and you can choose automatically keep my Mac up to date. I think I have that set on some computers and not others. But since I work on my computer so often, I can easily update manually. And then you can go to the App Store, and if you purchased anything, you can log into the App Store and download any of those. Now, if you have a previous Mac, you can use the Migration Assistant to pull everything over to this new computer. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. So I have two main Macs I use right now. I use an early 2015 MacBook Pro Retina and a 2012 MacBook Pro. And I'm probably going to have this Mac Mini take the place of the 2015 MacBook Pro and the 2015 will take the place of the 2012 MacBook Pro. And then the 2012 MacBook Pro I'll just use for just different tasks. I may not use it daily anymore. So stay tuned for other videos using this. I'm going to be testing out the Wi-Fi 6 on it soon. I'll be testing out a very fast external drive enclosure. I have that coming up too. But like I said before, if you have anything you want me to cover on this, drop a comment below and I can add it to my list. So if you have any questions in the meantime, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.